If you want to be able to complete an algebraic proof, you first have to be able to work with the properties. In example one here, we're going to name the property that justifies each statement. And the best way to do that is to see how it changes from the left side to the right side, from the if portion to the then portion of the statement. In part A, if 16x is equal to 48, then x is equal to 3, we seem to have gotten rid of the 16 on the left. We have divided by 16, and we've divided by 16 on the right as well. If you divide by the same thing on each side, and the two things were equal to begin with, and they remain equal, then that's using the division property of equality. Part B. We're solving this equation, it looks like. We're in the process of it, and we have added 8 to the right side to make the minus 8 go away. We've added 8 to the left side. So this is the addition property of equality. In part C, 18 is equal to 3x, and 3x is equal to 9y. And then over here, instead of the 3x equal 9y, we have 18 equals 9y. Since these are the same here, then one can replace the other, and that's what's happened. So when something is replacing another, that's the substitution property. Part D, if x plus 5 divided by 2 is equal to 12 and x is equal to 2y, then 2y plus 5 divided by 2 is equal to 12. Same sort of thing has happened right here. We have replaced x with 2y because it says that they're equal. So this is also the substitution property. Part E, the two sides are exactly the same, completely identical, and that is using the reflexive property. So it would be helpful to maybe have a list of properties uh, available to reference. Uh, there are reflexive, symmetric, transitive, substitution, distributive, and then the addition, multiplication, subtraction, division properties of equality. Those are the most common. In example two, we're going to use the property that they give us and then complete the statement. The distributive property says that you're going to have a group of things multiplied by one item. And if we have four times a, we would get this 4a. And four times six would give you 24. Part B, the multiplication property of equality. You're going to have the same thing on each side that you multiply by. Here, the most common way that people would approach this is that you would get rid of the 3. So if you multiplied by 3 on the left, it would go away and leave you CD. And if you multiplied by 3 on the right, you would have 3EF. Part C is the symmetric property. The symmetric property says that if two things are equal, it doesn't really matter which one goes first. So we could switch these two around and put A, B here. And part D is the subtraction property. It says that if you subtract the same thing from both sides, and if they were equal to begin with, they will remain equal. We seem to have subtracted the 7 from the X, so we would subtract the 7 from the 10.